Hello, everyone, and welcome to Arcade Viking. Guess what? It's October. Halloween season. Spooky season. So this means it is time for another Halloween-themed history video. The subject of the two videos I'm doing for this Halloween season are going to be werewolves throughout history. And the subject of today's video is a werewolf that terrorized the early modern French countryside throughout the mid-18th century. The Beast of Gévaudan. So werewolves are, much like vampires, one of the most prolific and recognizable uh, figures in all of popular culture, <laughs> taking on a variety of different uh, shapes, sizes, and temperaments, whether they be the original classical wolfman uh, or they be sort of sympathetic anti-hero antagonistic figures like Lucian and the Lycans from the Underworld franchise, uh, or whether they be sympathetic hero characters such as Oz from Buffy or Werewolf by Night from uh, Marvel Comics, uh, Marvel Comics Superhero. Uh, in some cases, they're just straight up antagonistic, such as the Nazi werewolf, simply known as the Colonel from the manga and anime Helsing. Or in many cases, they can be comedic characters, such as the Wolfman from the Hotel Transylvania series. Whatever form, shape and form they take, werewolves are tied with vampires as being the one of the most recognizable, or being arguably the most recognizable horror monsters in all of human uh, popular culture. <clears throat> but what a lot of people don't know is that there were actually historical events that have been attributed to, if not werewolves, at least wolves that were considered monsters in their own, um, in their own way. <clears throat> One uh, such werewolf or monstrous wolf <clears throat> would spend several years terrorizing the rural countryside of France. Specifically, the Kingdom of France. So, before we get into the events of the Beast of Gévaudan itself, we need to take a look at sort of the environment uh, that the Beast of Gévaudan found itself in <clears throat> when it began its rampage. So, when, uh, right at the beginning of the Beast of Gévaudan's rampage, uh, France was under the rule of Louis the Fifteenth. And it was one of the major world powers at the time, uh, more commonly known as the Kingdom of France. <clears throat> However, during the reign of Louis XV, France would become exhausted from several large-scale conflicts, such as the wars of Polish and Austrian succession. Uh, Polish succession here, and Austrian succession here. <clears throat> And France would also uh, lose a long, a, a, essentially a world war against Britain, uh, the UK, the British Empire, and would lose a good chunk of its colonial territory. Uh, and here's a map showing sort of the territorial losses that France had and the territorial gains that Britain had. So because of this constant war and the loss of colonial territory, as well as uh, other factors such as famine um, and disease, the French peasants would begin to grow more and more unhappy with the French monarchy. Uh, and this would become increasingly clear uh, in the writings of philosophers such as Voltaire, which were, uh, the writings were very clear signs of discontent, but of course, um, Louis the Fifteenth would choose to ignore them. So essentially, uh, this chaotic uh, time of unrest uh, in France was a period ripe for some sort of uh, tragedy, uh, such as the Beast of Gévaudan, to make its appearance. Which leads us to the Beast of Gévaudan itself, and here is a uh, one of the many. Uh, depictions of the Beast of Jevadon here. 
So the Beast of Jevodong would commit its first recorded attack in the early summer of 1764 CE, when a young woman who was tending to her cattle in the Morkra Forest near the town of Vengong, uh, in the eastern part of Jevodong, would see a beast like a wolf, yet not like a wolf, um, who would then attack her. However, the bulls in her herd would proceed to charge the beast uh, and keep it at bay, then would proceed to drive it off after it attacked for a second time. Shortly afterwards, on June 30th, the beast's first official victim, uh, a 14-year-old named Jean uh, Boulet, uh, is killed near the village of Le Hubox, uh, near Langon. Um, on July 1st, uh, this victim is then buried without sacraments because she could not confess before her death. However, the burial certificate specifies that she was killed by a ferocious beast, also known as Le Bet uh, Feroce, um, which suggests that she is not the first victim, but only the first declared victim. A second victim is reported on August 8th, uh, aged 14, uh, who lived in the hamlet near Massonjean, uh, near the parish of Poulorin. Um, these two victims are killed in the Allier uh, Valley uh, from the end of August, and in September, other victims are recorded in the Macra forest or surroundings, and throughout the remainder of 1764, more attacks are reported in the region. Very soon, terror would grip the populace because the beast is reportedly preying on lone men, women, and children as they tend to livestocks, uh, livestock in the forest of Jevaldon. Uh, reports note that the beasts seem to only target the victim's head or neck regions. This will become very important later on in the movie, uh, in the video. <clears throat> Some witnesses claim that the beast has supernatural abilities. They believe it can walk on its hind legs uh, and feet like a human, and they can believe it can perform astounding leaps. They also believe that, it can, it, that apparently it can repel bullets and come back from the dead after being struck and wounded. Uh, and here is a the burial certificate of Jean Boulet. Uh, and then this would lead to, uh, these attacks would lead to increased attention. So by 17, December 1764 CE, rumors would begin circulating that there might be more than one animal, maybe a pair of them, behind the killings. And this is because there's been such a high number of attacks in such a short period of time that it appears that they are happening simultaneously. Um Though some con contemporary accounts suggest the creature was seen with a another such animal, while others report the beast was accompanied by its young. So it could be a pair, it could be a pack. On December 31st, the Bishop of uh, Mende, uh, Gabriel Florin de uh, uh, Chaussuis uh, Biorpre, uh, also the Count of Gévaudan, uh, calls for prayers and penance. Uh, the appeal remains in history uh, under the name of uh, the commandment of the Bishop of Mendal. Um, all the priests of the diocese uh, are then told that they have to announce it to their faithful. Uh, and in the long text, the bishop would go on to describe the beast as a scourge from God meant to punish men. Um, and he would often quote uh, individuals like St. Augustine and in invoking justice of God as well as um, the Bible and other divine threats such as uh, divine threats uttered by Moses, uh, which uh, include but are not limited to do, uh, the quote by Moses stating that I will arm the teeth of wild beasts against them. And at the end of, his com of this commandment, uh, prayers uh, 40 hours are recited for three consecutive Sundays. However, despite these divine pleas, the massacre would continue. On January 12th of 1765 CE, Jacques uh, Portefeuille, uh, Portefeuille uh, and seven children from the village of Villeray uh, in, the parish, uh, in the parish of uh, Chandelier uh, are attacked by uh, the beast. After several attacks, they drive it away uh, by staying grouped together. 
uh, the encounter eventually comes to the attention of Louis the Fifteenth, who awards three hundred uh, uh, livre, uh, livre uh, to uh, Portefe uh, and another three hundred livre uh, to be shared among his companions. Uh, the king also rewards uh, Portefe with an education at the kingdom's expense, and they, he then decrees that the French state would help find and kill the beast. Uh, on February 11th, uh, in the parish of Le uh, Mazu, um, uh, a little girl is buried who is about 12 years old, who has been partly devoured on the present day by a man-eating beast that has been ravaging the countryside for three months. That is a direct quote from uh, a uh, engraving uh, from a plaque from her burial, which you can find in this link here, and the link will also be in the sources of the video. <clears throat> By 1765 CE, uh, the story of the beast spreads throughout Europe, uh, the Courrier de Avignon, uh, and English journals begin to make fun of the impotence of royal power in the face of a simple animal. Meanwhile, the local bishop and the attendants have to deal with the influx of mail. Uh, people from all over France suggest more or less uh, eccentric, eccentric methods to overcome the beast. Uh, the court also issues depictions of the beast in Gévaudan, uh, so that, uh, and quote, everyone is less terrified at his approach and less likely to be mistaken, and so that uh, packs of hunting dogs can be trained to chase the beast thanks to a, uh, an effigy, quote, executed in cardboard. And here is a uh, depiction uh, an 18th century print of uh, Jacques Portefe and his companions fighting off the beast. Um, as you can see here, one of the children holds a cheek uh, that has been partially bitten off by the animal. Uh, and this would lead to uh, the royal intervention. So first, Captain uh, Duhamel uh, uh, of uh, the Claremont Prince Dragoons and his troops are sent to Gévaudan. Uh, although extremely zealous in his efforts, non-cooperation on the part of the local herders and farmers stalls uh, Duhamel's efforts. On several occasions, he almost shoots the beast, but is hampered by the incompetence of his guards. When the village of uh, Les Mazou uh, is not present and ready as the beast uh, crossed the river, at, uh, cross the, um, <clears throat> the uh, Trouillier, uh, Tourier River, uh, Duhamel uh, becomes increasingly frustrated. When Louis XV uh, agrees to send two professional wolf hunters, John uh, Charles, Marc Antoine uh, Vam uh, <clears throat> uh, Vam uh, Vamis, uh, Vamis a, uh, de Inneval, uh and his son John Francois, uh, Captain uh, Duhamel, uh, Duhamel is forced to stand down and return to his headquarters in uh, Claremont, uh, Ferran. Cooperating with uh, De Aval, uh, is impossible as the two uh, differ way too much in their strategies. Duhumeau uh, organizes hunting parties while De Aval and his son uh, have the idea and the strategy of using uh, stealthy techniques to shoot the, uh, or attempt to shoot the Beast of Gévaudan. Father and son, uh, Daniel uh, arrive in, Cla uh, in Claremont Ferrand on February 17th of 1765 CE, uh, bringing with them eight bloodhounds that have been trained in wolf hunting over the next four years, and then they uh, proceed to hunt as many Eurasian wolves as they can, believing one or more of these animals is the beast. However, despite their efforts, uh, the attacks continue, and because the attacks continue, the, the De Involves are replaced in June of 1765 by uh, Francois Antoine, uh, Antoine, sometimes wrongly identified with his son, uh, Antoine de uh, Biotone, the king's uh, sole arquebus bearer and lieutenant of the hunt, who arrives in Le, uh, Le Mazou on June of 20, uh, 22nd of uh, that same year. And here are the uh, 
Claremont, what the Claremont Dragoons would have looked like uh, at the time. So with uh, the, the continuation of <laughs> rural intervention, uh, on August 11th, Antoine, uh, Antoine uh, would organize a great hunt. Um, uh, the day would then see the feet of what would have become known as the Maid of Gibraltar. Uh, Marie-Jean Valet, uh, who was about 20 years old uh, and was a servant of one of the parish priests, um, who was in company with uh, of other present women, uh, as they were walking across the footbridge to cross a small stream, the beast would apparently appear, uh, and, the, and several of the women would take uh, a few steps back, but the beast would then throw itself at Marie-Jean, um, and the latter would, uh, Marie Jean would then manage to plunge uh, a spear that she had into the beast's chest, and the beast would then drop into the river and disappear into the woods. Uh, the story very quickly reaches Antoine, who then goes to the scene. He finds the spear was indeed covered in blood, and that the traces found are similar to those of the beast. Uh, in a letter that he would write uh, to uh, St. Florentin, uh, minister of the king's house, um, he would compare Marie-Jean to uh, Jean d'Arc or Joan of Arc uh, and would give her the nickname uh, the Maid of Gévaudan. On uh, either the 20th or the 21st of September, um, Antoine would go on to kill a large gray wolf, reportedly measuring uh, 31 inches or 81 centimeters high, um, 5 foot 7 inches or 1.7 meters long, and weighing 130 pounds or 60 kilograms. Uh, the wolf would be then be named La Lou de Chaz, or the wolf of, uh, of Chaz, uh, Chazé, sorry, the wolf of Chazé, <clears throat> after the nearby Abbe de Chazé, uh, and is said to be a really large wolf. Um, Antoine would then go on to officially state uh, that, <clears throat> and I quote, we declare by the present report signed from our hand, we never saw a big wolf that could be compared to this one. Hence, we believe this could be the fearsome beast that caused so much damage. And then the animal would, be, would then be further identified as the culprit by several attack survivors who recognize the scars on its body inflicted by victims, including uh, Marie-Jean Vallet and her sister. Uh, after a report is written, Francois Antoine's son loads would load the animal into onto his horse and would take it to Paris, uh, where he would then show it to uh, Monsieur de Montaluc, uh, and in Claremont Ferrand, he would have it stuffed, and then he would leave Cl uh, Claremont on the 27th of September to arrive in Versailles uh, on the 1st of October, where he would be held as a hero, and the beast would be exhibited in a uh, Jardine du Roy. And here is a uh, depiction, 18th century depiction of uh, the Maid of Javadon, uh, Marie Jean Ballet. How, uh, however, uh, while this was going on, uh, while Francois Antoine's son was being held as a hero and showing off uh, the body of the supposed beast of Javadon. And Francois Antoine and his gamekeeper uh, and his gamekeepers would stay in the Auvergne woods to chase down what they thought was the female partner of the beast, uh, as well as her two pups, which had been reported near the Abbey of Chazé, and they would succeed in killing uh, uh, the uh, female and one of the pups on October nineteenth. Uh, with reports stating that the pup was already larger than its mother. At the examination of the pup, it appeared to have uh, a set of a uh, double set of dew claws, um, a hereditary malformation found in the uh, Bas Rouge or uh, Beau uh, Saron dog breed. Uh, and then eventually the other puppy, the other pup would be shot uh, and hit and is believed to have died as it retreated between the rocks. With that, Antoine would return to Paris on the 3rd of November and would re re uh, receive a large sum, sum of money, over 9,000 uh, uh, livres, livre, uh, as well as fame, titles, and awards. Uh, and then here are some 18th century depictions of uh, 
Francois Antoine Slaying, the Wolf of Chazé, and then uh, the uh, a depiction of the wolf being displayed at the court of Louis XV in Versailles. However, the attacks would not end with uh, Francois Antoine's killing of uh, the uh, two wolves and their pups, um, because further attacks would happen. Uh, the month of November, however, would pass without any attack being reported, uh, and this would lead to the populace to believe that Antoine had indeed uh, killed the beast. Um, and in a letter from uh, November 26, uh, the uh, syndic uh, Etoine Lafont uh, would affirm uh, to the intendant of Languedoc uh, that, and I quote, we no longer hear of anything relating to the beast. But despite that statement, rumors would quickly spread of new attacks uh, towards uh, Segue and uh, Locrie. On December 2nd, two boys aged 6 and 12 would be attacked, uh, suggesting that the beast was still alive, and the beast would try to capture the youngest uh, but six, was successfully fought off by the older brother, uh, the older boy. Soon after, successful attacks would follow, uh, and some of the shepherds witnessed the beast uh, showing no fear towards cattle at all. Uh, and then shortly after that, a dozen more deaths would be reported uh, to follow um, attack, uh, following attacks near La uh, Bezere Saint Marie. Uh, until the beginning of 1766 CE, these facts remained uh, episodic, and no one knows if they are attributed to the beast or to wolves. However, in a letter um, that he wrote to the intendant of Averin uh, on January 1st of 1766 CE, uh, Monsieur de Montaluc uh, was, would seem to be convinced that it was indeed the beast who had reappeared. Uh, the attendant would then alert King Louis uh, the Fifteenth, though Louis the Fifteenth would essentially have lost interest, no longer wanting to hear about the ferocious beast that he assumed his arquebus uh, bearer had killed. Uh, and from then on, newspapers would no longer report any of the attacks that occur in Jamaudan or in the south of Al Alvarin. Uh, in March of 1766 CE, the attacks would then multiply. Um, local gentlemen known uh, now know that their salvation will not come from the court. Probably, most definitely, strain further straining the already tense uh, relationship between the court and the common folk, the peasants. <clears throat> um, on March twenty fourth, the uh, particular estates of Javadon are held by uh, at uh, Marvigol. Uh, Antoine Lafont and the younger uh, Marquis du Approche, a local nobleman, would recommend poisoning the corpses of dogs and carrying them to the usual passages of the beasts. Uh, but the latter does not seem to cover as much ground as before, as it settles in the uh, Troy Mont region, um, Mont uh, Moshe, Mont Grand, and Mont Chavez around uh, 9.3 miles or 15 kilometers apart. <clears throat> and here is a depiction of um, the beast killing more people, specifically attacking a woman uh, from that time period. <clears throat> and then, of course, the final attacks would continue. Uh, the measures taken would prove uh, mostly ineffective, uh, small hunts would be organized and would fail. <clears throat> the beast would continue to attack throughout 1766 CE, uh, but it would seem that its mode of operation had changed. It seemed less enterprising and much more cautious, uh, as revealed by various correspondences, including that of Canon Aurier, a uh, parish priest of La Crie, uh, to Etoine Lafont. Etoine Lafont. Lafont. <clears throat> At the beginning of the next year, 1767 CE, uh, there would be a slight lull in the attacks, only for them to resume in the spring. Uh, the populace would then no longer know what to do except pray. Pilgrimages would then increase, mainly to Notre Dame uh, de uh, Villiers 
and Notre, uh, Notre Dame de Estour. On June 18th of that year, it is reported that uh, to the Marquis de Aperche that the beast had been seen the day before in the parishes of uh, Nozy Rode uh, and Desigay. Or Desigay. Uh, in the latter, the village of Les Binieres, uh, Binier, uh, it is alleged, uh, it allegedly killed. 19 year old John Bastille. However, the rampage of the beast would not last forever, as eventually a hunter by the name of Jean Chaste, uh, Chaste Le Chaste, <clears throat> uh, would kill the creature, um, uh, claiming to uh, apparently shooting the beast or what is presumed to be the beast. On the slopes of Mont Moshe, uh, now called La Son de Ave, uh, um, yeah, Ave, <clears throat> during the hunt organized by the Marquis de Apuche on uh, the 19th of June in 1767 CE. Uh, this would then be the tale of this uh, slaying of the beast would then uh, eventually in the 18. Uh, 80s, specifically 1889 CE, would be, then be turned into an oral tradition uh, when Abbott uh, Porsche uh, would tell uh, the story and would essentially make the story larger in life, uh, creating accounts uh, such as um, uh, uh, Jean Chaste uh, forging large silver caliber bullets uh, made with Virgin Mary medals um, to slay the beast. Though this is a uh, assumed to be a literary invention by the French writer Henri Perrault. After Jean uh, Chaste, uh, Chaste, uh, Chaste uh, would uh, had killed the beast, the body would then be loaded onto a horse and brought to the Chateau de uh, Besquet of the Marquis de Aperche, uh, located in uh, uh, Charre. Um, where it would then be uh, essentially uh, an autopsy would be performed on the body by uh, Dr. Borlanguet, a surgeon at uh, Sauguet. Uh, Dr. Borlanguet's uh, post-mortem report is transcribed uh, by the royal, uh, royal notary uh, Roche Etoine Marin, uh, where it would become known as the Marin Report uh, on the Beast. And the results of the examination would be consistent with a large wolf or wolf dog, but the remains are incomplete by the time of uh, by the time uh, Berlinguer, uh, Berlinguer, uh acquired them, precluding a conclusive uh, identification of the animal. I.e., there was no there was no way they can conclusively identify what type of animal it was. Uh, the beast would then be exhibited at the chateau, uh, where the Marquis de Aperche. Uh, would lavishly receive crowds, uh, which would throng to see the remains. Numerous testimonies from uh, victims of the attacks would enrich the Marin report, uh, and the beast would stay in Biscay for a dozen days. Uh, and here is a picture of the Marin report here. Uh, and then eventually in uh, 1995, um, a uh, plaque stele would be erected in honor of John Cheste uh, in the village of uh, La Besserie uh, Saint-Marie. Um, and the sculpture was by uh, Philippe uh, Cap Capeline. <clears throat> now we have to ask, what happened to the remains? Well, supposedly the Marquis de Aperche would instruct uh, a servant named uh, uh, Giray, uh to take the beast to Versailles to show it to the king. Uh, and according to old traditions reported by the uh, abbot uh, of uh, the abbot Porche um, and repeated by several authors, uh, John Chaste was, supposedly was on the trip, uh, but Louis uh, fifth, the 15th 
uh, then disdain, disdainfully rejected him because of the remains, uh, because the remains uh, summarily stuffed by an apothecary who had contented himself re with replacing the entrails with straw, gave off, um, apparently it was incredibly uh, disgusting, stinking, unbearable. However, this, um, ha this account has been called into question uh, by the testimonies of the servant of the uh, Marquis de Apache, uh, as collected in 1809, uh, who would say that uh, Gervais finally arrived in Paris and went to stay at the uh, Hotel uh, Particulier of Mr. de la, de la uh, roche uh to whom he had um, at the same time gave a letter in which Mr. Uh, de Apache uh, begged the Lord to inform the king of a happy deliverance of the monster. The king was at Compagnie at the time, and according to the news he was told, he gave orders to Mr. de Bofonto uh, to visit and examine the animal. The naturalist, in spite of the dilapidation to which the worms had reduced it uh, in the fall of the hares, following the heat at the end of July and at the beginning of August, in spite of the bad odor which it gave off after serious examination, would then judge it was a wolf. And as soon as Mr. de Buffon had um, made the examination of this animal, uh, Gervais hastened to have it buried because of the great stench, and he said he said he had uh, been so inconvenienced by it that he was sick and bedridden for around 14 days or more, um, and he suffered from this disease for about six years, and he even attributed uh, to this bad smell that he breathed for so long the poor health that he has always been burned with at the time. And this is a direct quote from uh, the book uh, Javadon Petit's History uh, de la Grande uh, Bete, uh, Bete <clears throat> uh, which will uh, be in the sources of the video. Um, it would then emerge that, that uh, in other sources that John Chastille did not accompany uh, Gervais to Paris. Likewise, the never the servant never presented the remains of the beast to the court of Louis the Fifteenth, uh, and finally, Buffon left no document on the subject. Neither kept in the collections of the Jardin du Roi and uh, in Paris, uh, nor buried in Marly or Versailles. The beast is probably still buried in the pri a garden of the private mansion of Louis Alexander de la Roche uh, Rochefoucauld. Um, a gentleman uh, sharing a distant common ancestor with the Marquis de Apache. Uh, the Hotel of uh, La uh, Rochefoucauld, um, located in the Rue de Seine, uh, would then be demolished in 1825 CE. And of course, the tax in Javadon would cease definitively. The authorities of the diocese would then grant rewards to the hunters. Uh, John Castile would receive 72 livres uh, live, uh, on the 9th of September. Uh, John Terrasse would receive uh, 78 livres on the 17th of September. And the hunters who accompanied them sh uh, shared 312 livres uh, on May 3rd of 1768 CD. And here is a uh, etching of the Hotel of La Rochefoucauld, right here, where the remains of the beast are probably still buried under rubble and uh, construction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, with the course of the beast's rampage, uh, now that we're done going over the course of the beast's rampage, now we need to ask what was the Beast of Jevaudan? <clears throat> well, the answer is it's complicated. We are, we're not 100% sure. There have been a, there are quite a few theories about what this uh, Beast of Jevaudan was. And one common theory, uh, as described in this paper uh, titled The Biology of the Beast of Jevaudan, Morphology, Habitat Use, and Hunting Behavior of an 18th Century man and Carnivore by Carl Hans uh, Tauke, um, uh, proposes the hypothesis that the Beast of Jevaudan might have been a lion, probably perhaps a lion that escaped 
uh, some noble's um, personal zoo or menagerie or something like that. Uh, and he goes over various different uh, criteria based off of body, fur, head, paw, etc., etc., vocalization, um, and things like that. <clears throat> and based off of these descriptions, uh, Takei uh, comes to the conclusion that the Bisa Javadon may have been a lion, possibly a sub-adult lion, um, from uh, South Africa. Though, of course, uh, as always, it is never that simple. Because other hypotheses proposed uh, by individuals such as J.M. Smith uh, in his paper titled uh, Dreadful Enemies, the Beast, uh, the Hyena, and Natural History in the Enlightenment. Uh, in this paper, J. Smith proposes the hypothesis that the Beast of Javadon was, in fact, a hyena. And his hypothesis is, to be fair, backed up by various descriptions from the time period uh, describing um, the Beast of Javadon as uh, looking like a hyena, as seen in this uh, depiction here, uh, and this depiction here, and this depiction here, where it says straight out a, is a portrait of a hyena, um, and it goes on to say that this is the beast, the ferocious beast uh, that uh, is terrorizing Javanon. Uh, and here is a very similar depiction from a <coughs> encyclopedia of the time uh, titled uh, the Encyclopedia or Dictionnaire uh, uh, Resignane de Science, de, uh, des, uh, de Arts et des uh, Metiers. Uh, and in these encyclopedias, it does have very detailed, uh, this encyclopedia, it does have very detailed uh, depictions of hyenas, which do sort of look like um, some of these images here, uh, especially this one and this one. Though, of course, it is not 100% one-to-one, 100% uh, one-to-one match in these images. But there's even more uh, mud in the water, uh, per se. Uh, and that is, and this comes again in a later paper by uh, Carl Hahn Takei again. Uh, and in this paper written in 2023, the previous paper he wrote uh, hypothesizing that it was a uh, lion was from 2020. And in this paper titled the 1767 French uh, report uh, Marine, a question report about the examination of an allegedly man-eating wolf, Canis Lupus. Uh, in this, uh, uh, Takei re-examines the Marin report and begins to take uh, heavy issue with some of the conclusions that the Marin report came to. And you can pause uh, to read uh, some of these um, here. Uh, and here. Uh, but essentially what the conclusion that he begins to come to in uh, his examination of this is that the, the proportions described in the Marin report are, one, they do match the wolves pretty closely, but two, uh, the Marin report describes them as being like abnormally large wolves or, in a, or the body that the uh, doctor of the Marin Report is examining as being a normally large wolf. Well, Takei, as he's looking at the, at these measurements, determines that no, this is actually these are actually pretty average sizes for uh, Eurasian wolves. Uh, and one of the other sticking points is the description of the fur colors as seen here, which, as he goes on to show in this photo, uh, the fur colors describe that the beast of Javadon is described to have had, and that the body of the beast examined in the Marin report is described to have had, uh, matches pretty closely, if not almost identically, with Eurasian wolves that can have gray, brown, black, and white fur colors, uh, including modded areas and dark bands, etc., etc., as well as reddish-brown color tones. So, it may be, in fact, that the beast, or the beast, because it seems there may have also been more of them, more than one of them, it may be, in fact, that the wolf was, the Beast of Javadon was simply a wolf. Now, 
I mean, it would be it's it would be interesting and cool if the Beast of Jabal Dawn had been a hyena or a lion that had escaped the like uh, the personal zoo or menagerie of a French noble, and that's certainly possible. But it's also very clear that it's equally possible, if not more possible, arguably, that the beasts of Jeladon were just simply wolves. But of course, there will be. There's never going to be a way to actually prove it because the bodies of all of the quote unquote beasts of Jeladon uh, are now lost. All right, so with that, that ends our video on the most famous werewolf uh, that uh, in the history of Europe, a werewolf that ravaged the French countryside for several years before finally being put down uh, and then being mythologized uh, and turned into essentially a heroic epic. So... I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you want to see me cover any of the subjects I talked about in the video in greater detail in later videos, please feel free to leave a comment in, a com in, in the comment section. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you all have a good day, and happy Halloween.